My husband does my gym makeup. Stop. Are you serious? Makeup, let alone to the gym. Why is she even going to the gym? Oh my god. Stock for Allah. You let your wife post on social media, you're the youth. Of course you are. Hold up, which one's the wife though? They both got earrings on. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. Listen, today we're going to be talking about a very important topic. You might be wondering, why is this even an issue? We're going to go into that. And also, I guarantee you as a Muslim or Muslima, a Muslim man or woman watching this, this is probably going to be the most important video you've seen in a long time and for a while to come about the Ummah today and the state of modern Muslims and Muslimas. We're going to be talking about why this is an issue, different hadith and Quranic relevances of this, and we're going to go into scientific studies. So timestamps are in the description if you want to skip ahead, but I guarantee you, you won't want to do that. You're going to want to watch it segment by segment because it's very important. Now going into it, I've seen a lot of these videos about Muslim couples online, like meet my wife, how we met, story time, right? Our first wedding night, you know, what really happens, virginity expectations you know i've even seen couples posting videos about answering your tmi questions and just talking about themselves this isn't a matter of is it permissible and is it not we're going to get to that obviously but it's more so why is this even happening what has genuinely happened to muslim men today did we literally lose every ounce of our dignity manhood and respect that we have for ourselves for allah and for our women folk what is going on there's real pages on instagram and tiktok pages that are just fetishizing Muslim couples, romanticizing it. Yes, a lot of the times it's women that fall for this and it's just a bunch of guys showing off their wives, their bodies, wearing tight ass dresses. How it's not even you. correct hijab. And if this doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me, if you don't have as much ghayra for these men's wives more than they do themselves for their own wives, then you're probably not well aware of what these terms even are. And it's normal, I'm not shaming you. Matter of fact, most of my clients, before they start working one-on-one -on -one with me, are the youth. They don't really have ghayra, they don't understand what it means to have protective jealousy, they have low testosterone, and don't worry about that, we're gonna go into that very easily right now. The first term I'm gonna talk about is ghayra. What is ghayra? Ghayra is protective jealousy. It's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in us as men, over our family, over those that are under our responsibility. Now, ghayra doesn't mean you're a control freak. It doesn't mean that you are a lunatic. It doesn't mean you are a tyrant. It doesn't mean you are oppressive or barbaric or insecure. It simply means that you have boundaries that you will exercise over your family because you want to protect them under all costs and you want to protect their dignity and the dignity and respect and honor that Allah has put in them as human beings and women, not as objects. Ghayra is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in us. It's a gift that men have been given. It's not just Muslim men because there's non-Muslim men that have ghayra as well. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has ghayra, obviously in a matter which befits his majesty, but not in a way that it's similar to our human ghayra, but so much so to the point where that's you know one of the reasons Allah has made all inward and external outward sins haram because of the honor that he has given us. Now the next term is gonna be dayuth. What is a dayuth? A dayuth is a man that has no ghayra. A dayuth is a man that doesn't have protective jealousy. He, it literally, it means cuck. Like this is this whole cuck epidemic that's been going on where men are just parading their wives. A dayuth is a man not only who doesn't have ghayra or protective jealousy, he's a man that will never enter Jannah. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in an authentic narration that there will be three that Allah will forbid from entering paradise. One of those three are a dayuth, a man that doesn't have protective jealousy over his women folk. This is so deep that even the Shafi'i and Hanbali schools of thought in jurisprudence Islamically will not even accept the witness or testimony of a man that is dayuth. Take that in. The reasons why Muslim men and just men period today are very dayuth, right? They want to show off their wives because in some weird cuck way, they've brainwashed themselves to think that if my chick bad, as in my woman looks very attractive and everyone knows that my woman looks attractive, that makes me look good. That increases my value as a man and status. You don't have ghayra if you want to show off your wives. And the physical attractiveness of your wife has nothing to do with your value as a man because at the end of the day, that's separate. And if anything, the Prophet mentioned that if you're going to marry a woman for multiple things, marry her for her deen. That's not something that could be just gauged by physical appearance alone. We can't judge that. So at the end of the day, you have them misconstrued. Now, what I believe the deep implication of this, and we talk a lot about this in my coaching with my clients in mental health, is when we as men have been watching haram most of our life, we are basically subconsciously wiring ourselves and programming ourselves to think that we are getting off to being a cuck. 
And the way that this works is, again, I don't know if this, there's any research on this. We're going to get into actual research in a bit. But the thing that I found out is when you are watching P, when you are watching Haram, you're basically watching a man get intimate with a woman. You're not getting intimate with the woman yourself. You're watching that. So you're basically forming almost a conditioning in your brain that you are getting aroused to this man doing everything to your woman in this video that you would wish you could do. But you can't. Therefore, you're getting off to that. That is one of the most sick and disturbing and twisted things of all, obviously. But I need you to understand that at the end of the day, this is one of the underlying mechanisms neurologically why you have this cuck fetish, why you almost like showing off your women and you like to this idea of, hey, I want everyone to see how attractive my woman is. And there's also the societal implication and aspect of it too, where society almost shames men that have ghayra, unfortunately. If you have ghayra, society and Muslims, unfortunately, today will say, oh, you're controlling, you're barbaric, you're insecure, you're old-fashioned, you are too strict, you, you need to let them be independent and go out there and free mix and spread their wings and fly and yada, yada, yada. Now, whether we admit it or not, a dayuth or men that will never enter Jannah, and unfortunately, we need to be very careful of this. Now, the youth is not just a man, literally, who is a cuck who doesn't mind seeing his women folk with adultery and fornication, but it's taking any means that lead up to that. And they don't mind exercising boundaries with this. Now, lastly, I'm going to define one final term. It's called the baruj. The baruj is a woman that is basically displaying her beauty to non-mahram men, i.e. today, internet strangers, millions of them, for views, for likes, for money which I don't know if it's going to be haram income, but it's not that far of a reach to think. So. Now I get it. I completely empathize with these sisters because we live in a society today where sex sells. Hijab has been sexualized, unfortunately, by many things such as the haram industry for videos. And also just in general, you see all these hijabi models and influencers wearing tairas, abayas, and you could see their hair out and you could see their neck and they don't have haya. But it's not just that. It's the fact that at the end of the day, you don't understand that the baruj is also something that a woman who indulges in this and doesn't repent and all this, there's an authentic narration to mention that they too will never enter Jannah. This is not a joke. I care about you guys watching this. It's not that this is some hit piece on Muslim couples that are just posting cute, innocent videos. The metric for whether we're on the right path or not is not the social validation and likes and feedback that we get from people because all of the comments on these videos overwhelmingly will not be shaming them in society it'll be comments that are parading it that are promoting it that are telling them oh my god couple goals alhamdulillah mashallah allahumma barik now for those of you sciencey people out there we're going to put some primary peer reviewed literature to the best of my ability and some other studies on the screen right now the first study says in a survey of more than 2000 british citizens who are currently in a relationship only a mere 10 percent of them who have posted images of themselves and their partner on social media describe them as actually very happy nearly half or 46 percent of them do not publish posts said that the relationship was in fact very happy subhanallah i.e the main takeaway from the study is the more that you post the less happy that you're going to be the less that you post the more happy a private life is a happy life now the next research paper is going to be on studying sexual objectification in brain processes the thing about oh don't objectify women let's talk about why men do that to begin with it says both male and female participants were exposed to images of scarcely or fully dressed male and female models together with doll-like avatars that were created on the basis of the same models using EEG imaging. The brains of both men and women tend to perceive a lower degree of humanity or a stronger re resemblance with an object in women. And we know obviously that the, the aura of a woman is greater in size than the aura of a man as in women have uh, more strict hijab than men. Subhanallah. It's like all of these things that Allah has revealed to us are just coming into line right now and coming into place. And we should have just almost followed these things even sooner before reading these things. We shouldn't need studies, unfortunately, to fall into line. Additionally, we have shown that a woman in bikini or underwear is perceived more similarly to an object than a man is. SubhanAllah. The next one is, is social media PDA a sign of happiness or overcompensation? These findings demonstrate the paradoxical nature of social media. People who are less satisfied with their relationships may engage in excessive displays on social media in order to almost compensate by not feeling close to their partners. So they do it. And at the end of the day, unfortunately, they feel like this is a part of the relationship now where it's, they can't even do anything without their phone. But I've seen men that go down on a knee to propose to their wife or their soon-to-be wife. And the girl says, stop, get up, do that again. I, need, I didn't record it. I need to get this for the story or get this for the gram. Stuck for Allah, what has life come to nowadays? Basically, results reveal that greater disclosure 
was associated with higher intimacy in the couple when done offline. And the last, but definitely not the least important study that I'm going to mention is going to be imagination is a neurological reality that can impact our brains. Unfortunately, when you do these wife tags or meet my wife or hey, our nikah first night, men can't help and women can't help but put themselves and imagine themselves in that scenario. It's kind of like when you see a really nice fast car when you're driving in like a Lamborghini or something, you don't really imagine that guy in the Lamborghini. You don't care about that guy. When you see that nice car and you're looking at it as men, it's because you're imagining what it would be like to have that car yourself, to be in that car yourself, to have that woman beside you. What this means is essentially... Congrats, man. When you're basically talking about your nikah night, popping your wife's cherry in halal for the first time, that's now going to be our wife because we're all involved in this story, right? We're all imagining ourselves to be in this. Now, stuck for all jokes aside, why are you doing this as a man? Why are you posting your wife and talking about how it was and all of this and with no shame, bro, no dignity, no khaira? Like a youth, and you're posting this to millions of internet strangers. Creeps, man. I didn't know that foot fetishes were this bad today. Like, men will literally fetishize anything today. And you're posting pictures. And this is to the women, too. Driving a car with your Starbucks drink in one hand, and then you have your long nails on the other hand. What do you think men are going to imagine when they see your hands? Now, unfortunately, this is the reality. It's like, oh my God, why, why are men doing this in the first place? That's their problem, right? I'm going to raise a, a son that doesn't do this. You can't control all men. This whole pacifism and if I'm good, then everyone will be good mentality is why we got to this point where we are today. Society almost robbed you of your critical thinking. And when we take it back into Islam, the Prophet mentions that the Dayuth will never enter Jannah. He himself had so much khaira and Matter of fact, there's been so many narrations that I can talk about, but I'm going to link an important khutbah in the description after this if you guys want to watch that from a sheikh. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't allow men that, according to the Quran, were allowed in his house around his wives. Subhanallah. There was a man who was around one of his wives, and this was basically one of those men that were like eunuchs, right? I think that's how it's pronounced. And they're basically men that don't have sexual desire for many reasons. Many, maybe they don't have... Uh, actual genitalia maybe they have no drive whatever the reason they're permitted to be in the house to work and so on and so forth now when the process came home this man was basically among the wives or among his wife describing some other girl then she was walking towards me it's as if four women were walking towards me and when she was walking away from me it's as if eight women were walking away from me subhanallah Bruh. talking about her physical characteristics and the process mentioned you from today this man's not allowed in her house anymore this is the last time this man's gonna be here why because if he is describing a strange woman like that, the Prophet ﷺ didn't want him describing his women and his wives to anyone like that. Additionally, there was somebody that I believe his his wife was sleeping with a man, or this was like a theoretical, and the Prophet ﷺ basically said that you need four male witnesses for this. And the man was saying, wait, so, Ya Rasulullah you're saying that if I walk in on my wife, I'm to stop and not do something when this man is basically with my wife and I have to go and get four male witnesses? And the Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And this man said, you know what? I can't do that. O Messenger of Allah, don't take this the wrong way, but I can't do that. I will deal with him with my sword before I even think about witnesses. And I'll look at the ghayra. And the Prophet ﷺ was talking to the, the companions and he was saying, you know, almost like in a lighthearted way saying, this is just because of his ghayra. And he told the companion, you know, by Allah, I have more khaira than you, and Allah has more khaira than me. We need to understand, it, it went to a, a certain example in pre-Islamic Arabia that men would literally bury their daughters. And we think it was because of email infanticide was because men were resourceful offspring and progeny. And when you have women, they're not going to be as good in terms of getting resources and working. Sure, that was one reason. But another reason was... The thought of an enemy tribe taking you and taking your women as slaves and captives was unfathomable. Out of the ghayra that they had, they literally buried their daughters of stuck for Allah. But Islam came and gave a very legitimate, healthy, and channeled way to express your ghayra. Not in an unhealthy and haram way, by the boundaries of Sharia and Islam. So what is the solution at the end of the day? Now, first, I want to give some advice for men. So the first thing I'm going to say is gain knowledge, because the more that you study Islam and understand about khaira and the attributes of a proper man, a qawwa, you will understand that this behavior has to go, unfortunately. And it's okay if your wife 
is on social media and you've never exercised boundaries on, up until now, but now's the time. We need to get that in check and get that in line. Number two is going to be establish boundaries in your family early on, right? It's how can you allow your wife to be basically posting her entire body thirsting strange men on TikTok for millions of strange men for years? And now you're going to say, you know what? By the way, Habibti, I don't want you doing that anymore. You think it's going to be that easy? Of course, it's going to be much easier if you do this early on. And then the right woman will basically get with you. And the wrong woman, you can just skip and have an abundance mentality. Do not marry women that have no haya and will openly want to continue their tabarruj despite being married to you. And if you don't know how to level up your life on self-improvement and get your testosterone up, hit me up at fivefit.com for one-on-one -on -one coaching to accelerate your life and make years of progress in a matter of months, inshallah. Now, advice for women. If you're watching this, listen, I know women watch my videos. Who is your audience? Why are you doing all this, right? Obviously, gain knowledge like the advice for the brothers, but listen, at the end of the day, sis, I don't want to control you. I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to force you to do something that you're not ready to do yourself, but ask yourself, why are you doing these things? Why are you posting this? Who is your audience? Is your audience of one, which is just Allah, or your audience hundreds of thousands of internet strangers that are basically going to be just pretty much simps and cucks that will do anything to just get with you. They'll do anything to just get an ounce of you to reveal something, whether it's your figure. As the Prophet mentioned, there's going to come a time where the hour will not come until women will basically go outside fully clothed yet naked, right? Do you want that? Are you just trying to accelerate the day of judgment? Obviously, that's figure of speech, but I feel it's tough. It's so tough when your entire self-esteem and attributed self-worth is contingent upon social validation. I get it. It's completely tough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy on you. But at the end of the day, hijab isn't supposed to be sexy or attractive. The point of hijab is literally to conceal your beauty, not to beautify being covered. And I, I don't want you guys as the viewers to go and attack them and harass and bully these couples that I've displayed here, which have already displayed themselves on multiple platforms, bigger platforms. What I need you guys to do is understand that at the end of the day, as Muslims, we have to enjoy good and forbid evil. This doesn't mean go harass them, but it means try to give them a siya in private. Try to advise them. If they don't and it's public and it's getting out of line, comment these things. Don't be promoting this nonsense and filth. Don't be fetishizing. Don't be romanticizing it. A lot of women do this, unfortunately. And don't be just saying, oh, dayuth, dayuth, dayuth. Like, you know, be sincere in how you advise them. Tell them that this is not okay. Put Islamic dalail, dalil evidence up so that they can see it. Nothing changes if nothing changes as an ummah. And I'm getting sick and tired of watching these videos, unfortunately. But what can you do? This is modernity. And the Prophet mentioned towards the end of time, Islam will indeed return to being strange. So glad tidings to the strangers. But do we not have more love for our women? Do we not have more protectiveness for our women? Do we not care about them? Do we not get bothered by them being around other men, looking at men, watching men, showing themselves off to men? getting with other men, when do we draw the line? And I get it. Shaitan will come to you and tell you that doing something haram is for a greater intention. Like maybe it's for the sake of dawah. Maybe it's to influence other hijabis. But ask yourself this. No cap. Just sit down in the dark without anyone else, without your woman and ask yourself, do you really believe the nonsense and BS that you've been telling yourself? Do you really or is it time now and enough is enough to just get your life in order, get your family in order, prevent them from hellfire to the best of your ability, protect them and make dua to Allah that not only do you want them to go to Jannatul Firdos, but your actions are lining up with that. With this being said, Jazakallah khair to everyone for watching this. Inshallah, stay subscribed for the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.